It's no surprise that the most successful people in the world are generally those that dream big and take lots of risks. Just think of guys like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, and millions of other people who have changed the world in revolutionary ways. They didn't get there by doing what everyone else around them was doing. And yet, unlike their thought process and how they saw the world, many people now think that they have to do what everyone else is doing in order to achieve some level of success. Today, we live in a world where taking risks is actually looked down upon and it's avoided at all costs. Well, let me tell you a story about why taking risks might be the best thing that you can do your entire life because they just might pay off. Just two days ago, I had a call with a coaching student of mine and we were reviewing some of the data that he had for a product that we had ran and on its first day, it did over $3,000 in sales, which is not very common for any e-commerce business, let alone a first time product launch for a dropshipping store. Now the day prior, I gave him an advertising strategy to follow and it seemed as though he had known what I was talking about and he understood the assignment. And yet when we went in to review the ads manager, the strategy was similar yet wildly different from the strategy that we had discussed using. And we kind of laughed and we looked at the data and it was like an $800 profit day, which is just insane for the first day of a product launch, because it wasn't something that either of us had intentionally sought out for for this test. But it really got us thinking about how important it is to take risks and to explore some of those wild tests every now and then and do something differently from what's common or normal if you want to yield an uncommon or an unnatural result and outcome. I was listening to a podcast from Alex Ramos the other day, and he said that one of the best decisions that he had ever made and something that he had actually learned from a mentor of his was this concept of allocating a minority of your ad spend if you are currently running a business or if you're not running a business, this might just be a minority of your time into something that you maybe don't understand or that you're uncertain about, but that's just this wild, massive risk that you take, whether it's a new creative angle, whether it's the scripts that you use to handle a, a customer concern who's like unhappy with their experience with your brand, whatever it might be, he recommends to allocate a minority of your total testing budget or your total attention into those wild tests because the likelihood that over time, one of those tests is going to make you back more than what those other ones lost is infinite higher than not. So what do I mean by this? Let's say you're running an e-commerce business and you're spending $10,000 a month. And let's say that you allocate 5% of that budget on a monthly basis. So $500 a month to just testing these wild things. Now, I'm not saying that you have to run ads with a model who's shirtless in order to try to endorse your product. I'm not talking that crazy. I'm talking about maybe trying that new advertising platform that you've never tried. So if you're on Facebook, maybe trying TikTok or maybe trying Snapchat or Pinterest, or maybe you are selling a supplement to athletes and you haven't actually explored targeting regular everyday people that just wanna be active and healthy, right? Like working moms or parents who are constantly active, but maybe they're not working out in the gym. And maybe that supplement isn't as relevant to their specific situation, but you might just land on an audience that purchases the product and at an incredibly profitable rate that you would have otherwise never known about because you were sticking in this bubble of what you think you know. But in reality, we all know a lot less than we think we do about the world, about our brand, about how to market effectively and things of that nature. And so that's why it's so important to just allocate a minority of your budget if you're a business towards these wild tests. They should be mindful. They should be somewhat calculated. It shouldn't be like completely random, but sometimes they can be completely random. Maybe you're used to testing a campaign on Facebook for your e-commerce business with a hundred dollar CBO at a hundred bucks a day. Well, what if you launched 10 different audiences at a hundred bucks a day and you tested a bunch of different things and you only did that maybe one time per month because I know that that's not you know a small amount of money to some people then you'll probably find that of those other audiences that you tested this super aggressive budget or where you perceive to be super aggressive that you might just find something that slips through the cracks and outperforms everything else and scales to the absolute moon you would have never otherwise discovered that if you hadn't taken that risk and kind of gotten out of your comfort zone. And now this also can apply outside of business as well. So let's say that you don't have a business. Maybe you have a job and you're looking to pursue a side hustle and you've had your eyes on something, but you haven't been willing to take that risk because you're not sure how it's going to pan out. Again, maybe taking that risk and allocating a percentage of your monthly attention to something that's wild. And it's this crazy idea that other people perceive 
or that other people are speaking over you, then just pursuing that and drowning out all the other noise that's going on around you, it, that thing just might pay off. And at the end of the day, the only true risk is not taking any risk at all, because that is the only way that you can guarantee to stay in the exact position that you're currently in. The final thing that I'll say is that part of that process is also volume. So if you make these wild, crazy risks, but you only do it once a year, you don't do it once a month, once a week, once a day, once an hour, then you'll decrease the likelihood that one of those wild risks will actually click, right? It's very similar to if you're testing products in e-commerce. If you're sending emails in a, for a service-based business and you're trying to reach your target customer and get responses, if you're putting out flyers for a local business that you're working with or that you own, if you're putting out content and you're trying to have one of those videos go viral, right? The guy that makes a hundred videos and then interprets the data is going to be much more likely to have one or two that go viral than the guy that sits down and tries to make five or 10 perfect videos. And so when I say take risks, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go bungee jumping and you have to go skydiving and do all these crazy things within your life or within your business. It just means do things a little bit differently from how you normally have as often as you possibly can in a somewhat calculated way. And you would be so surprised at how many of those things go your way. So I hope that this video encouraged you in some way to you know, mindfully take those leaps that you may have been hesitant to take in the past because it's not as scary as you think. And there is a world of learning opportunities ahead of you that you may have have been missing out on up until this point. And if you want to take the risk of starting a new e-commerce brand in the most risk averse way using proven e-commerce systems and strategies, I encourage you to click the link below this video and apply for my incubator coaching program to see if you'd be a good fit. Other than that, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.